guys and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer board game review and today's game up on the tabletop is called tapestry by stonemeyer games it's made by jamie stegmeyer and the art is by andrew bosley the game plays two to five players but it has a automata factory single player variant along with a couple other variants for two players as well and in the game tapestry you're simply going to be trying to create a civilization it is a civ game in nature and you're trying to progress along the board along with your own capital area which you're trying to expand upon as well in the game you're not only going to expand upon the board by trying to gather victory points specific areas but you're also going to expand in four different categories. There's exploration, you have your technology tree, you've got your science, and then you've got your military. And you're moving along these tracks, or these skill trees, gaining and at a cost certain benefits. Maybe you'll go to the moon in this game, or maybe you're simply going to study science and push all of your tech very fast up uh, going through these four eras of the game. There's this income phase that gives you currency that you will utilize trying to go up these tracks and you may or may not finish your era before somebody else. The game has an interesting way of functioning, similar to a game uh, like Everdell, in which just because you're done with the game doesn't mean necessarily everybody else is, but once everybody finishes all the rounds they can based on using all the income they can, that's when the game will be over and you'll tally up your points. You're going to get your own player capital board, which will be different than everybody else's, as well as a specific civilization type, like the isolationists, for example, but there are many, many, many different types and I mean many, as well as fully sculpted miniatures that will represent the different buildings in your area or your capital city that will hopefully gain you points. It's kind of like a Tetris mechanic in which you're trying to do diagonal and vertical lines where you're trying to gather points during each income phase for having the best laid out capital city, as well as gaining points by having the most area controlled on the board for your military purposes. Anyway, it's a pretty large game and there's been many, many reviews done and a lot of walkthroughs done so I'm not going to go into too much detail as far as it goes I'll just show you the board and the idea of how it's going to work throughout your income phase and where you're gonna be placing certain things down and if you really want to watch a really nice walkthrough I think watch it played it does a very good job of explaining how that's done I'll leave a link down below to give you the exact detailed description of how to play the game tapestry but anyway let's go ahead and take it down below I'll show you the basic idea of what it looks like and how each and everything functions and then we'll come up and I'll give my review for the game so here we have the beast that is Tapestry, and I went ahead and just placed down for one player. It's not a solo mode game, it's also not a multiplayer game, but because it's so massive, I just want to show you what it looks like and all the components in the game. There's still a bunch of extra stuff like these different houses that are in the box, as well as all the different player colors and whatnot. I'm just showing you red here, but let's go ahead and just get into it, okay? This is the main board of the game, and this is what the continent of your civilization is going to kind of look like. It is going to have the different areas areas in which you're going to be trying to gather uh, conquered areas these, these are little tiles here and you'll be moving around utilizing these pieces to conquer specific areas to gain specific resources and of course victory points in the game you're going to start off with an income phase and what's really nice about this is depending on the turn or the round of the game it's going to tell you which one of these phases you're going to enact and how they're going to function but the main idea is to start off you're going to get a player board which is this here you're going to get one of these capital city boards which is going to be this here along with these spaces you can't place on because these are basically already filled in by rivers and whatnot uh, you're also going to get this side of the board here which is going to show you the different um, tech cards that will be upgrading throughout the game from X to circle to square. And then you're also going to be getting a specific type of population, like my guys here are the isolationists which means that they're gonna start off with four of these tokens here. Whenever they conquer an area, you're gonna take one of these tokens along with it, and that will secure the area from being attacked. It's a pretty useful thing to do when you're playing as a passive uh, character. As well as, of course, you're gonna gain victory points depending on where you conquer and how you conquer in this game, provided it's the same type of area and whatnot, okay? You're also going to place two of your little control markers on the area in which you're numbered. So in this case, this is a three slash five. I've got a five here, so two go here, meaning this can never be taken over. 
Uh, the board here, as you can see, has four different tech trees. You're going to have the science, the military, the tech, and the exploration, and everybody's going to place their tokens on each of the beginning tracks for the game board. You're going to place the science die here, and you're going to place the military die over here. The board has a front and a back, so as you can see here, we have the one to three player board on this side, and then it will be the four and five player board on the other side. Additionally, you're going to have these tech cards, which you'll shuffle and deal out three, and actually shows you on the board where you place them. Uh, and each of them are going to have specific abilities that you're going to gain based on uh, where they're at in, on, on a board specifically. So as the uh, game progresses, if you have this board here and this starts here, uh, beginning of your income phase, you'll move this up and you're going to gain this circle benefit and then you'll move it up again on the next income phase and you'll gain whatever the square benefit is. There is a handy dandy chart for all the cards in the game to explain what they all do somewhere in here. Let me see if I can find it for you guys really quick because it is rather massive. There you go. And it has a front and it has a back to show you the different tech cards as well as, of course, what each of the tech tracks do. So basically you're gonna gain your income. When your income is gonna be all the exposed resources on this track here. So in this case, you're gonna get one of each of these four different resources. And then additionally, you'll gain points for each card in your uh, tech tree over here. Again, points based on having the complete vertical and horizontal lines that'll be on the city here. You're gonna get one of these tiles from over here, which you'll just place a face up in front of you. And you'll get a tapestry card, which you're gonna take. And then after you've basically gathered your resources, you're gonna go ahead and flip over this card and place it down. You must place at least one tapestry card during each of the phases. After the first one, you're going to be able to gain resources if you're the first person to put a card there. Some of them will be based on the era. Other ones will happen immediately. Most of them will give you victory points of some sort. Uh, after that, you're also going to... Oh, I didn't also talk about these things here. This over here is basically your uh, building board in which you place all the buildings and tells you where to place them based on how large they are and what tech tree they're in. And as you progress throughout these tech trees, uh, when you go from the first to second on any of these, you'll gain a building and second to third and third to fourth. And whoever gets there first, kind of like a race, will get the building and be able to place it on their board. And remember, this is kind of like a Tetris-style grid in which you need to place to make sure that you never touch these little dots here. And you're trying to either fill up the squares or fill up lines that are vertical and horizontal because th that will give you points and or bonus resources depending on how you choose to do it. These three cards here, along with the fact that you shuffle and deal them out, will also have buildings on them. And as you acquire these buildings, you'll place them down as well, securing your city, making it more viable. After you've got all through all the basic income, you're then going to take turns going back and forth, spending resources. Uh, some of them are going to be wild, others will be specific. And when you spend the resources, it'll tell you on each track, it starts off with a wild of any type. You'll move your little marker from one space to another. Uh, this military tech tree, as you move along it, uh, will basically let you conquer specific areas on the board. Uh, this exploration area will let you draw tiles and then allow you to place them down and choose how you want to place them down, and you'll score points based on how you place them down. So you can kind of do some things that are like combinations where you'll move this along once, you'll draw two, move it along, do again, and you'll place a new one. And then you can move this along, and you'll be able to, able to place these guys down here, which will score you points, gaining specific areas and whatnot, so you can use these to your benefit. Uh, you're just going to go ahead and take one of the actions on your turn. The action's pretty simple. Spend a resource or resources, depending on how far along the track you are, and move yourself up and do whatever it says. And then it's going to go in turn order continuously up until you run out of resources. Now, just because you're out of resources or your opponent's out of resources doesn't necessarily mean that the era is over for you. Uh, but basically, when you run out, that's when you're going to start the next income phase. The next income phase will be based on which ones of these have been taken off and placed over here and what you're going to be gaining. Another thing to note on all these tracks here is as you go throughout them, so for instance, if I move from here to here, you'll have choices. So you'll be able to draw one of these tech cards, or you can take a house off. When you take houses off, it'll function just like the big cities, and you'll be able to place them down on your board anywhere you want. And you're trying to fill in the different gaps and whatnot. It's important to do that also because you're going to gain resources. These will open up spaces on your board for the income phase that will give you additional resources for the different types of resources you're going to have. So that's pretty useful as well. There's four different types, and all four of them are going to be based on the different tracks on the board. You can easily go through and remove any of these, but it will be depending on what you want to do in the game. So for instance, this is going to let you get victory points for having tech cards, and this in turn will let you use tech cards on this tree. Whereas this one here is going to be your science area, and you'll score points provided you get the horizontal and vertical lines where you get one point for that as you move along you can get additional points as well for the end of the game and that's the basic idea it's pretty simple really just choose one of the tracks spend the resources whether it be a wild 
or maybe a wild in this resource, or two wilds in this resource, or two of this resource, depending on how far along you are, getting past each of these tracks to gain the specific building corresponding to it. So for instance, this one will be this one, uh, this one will be this one, and this one will be this one, and placing them down on your board. You're working to not only control this area, but also to secure this area and prevent your opponents from messing with you because in certain circumstances, your opponent can take control of one of your areas by using military force, knocking you over and gaining control of certain areas. There's other some unique benefits as the end of these tracks go. Like let's go ahead and take a look at the exploration. When you get to the very end, you'll draw three exploration tiles and then you get to choose one and play it right in front of you. It'll just go somewhere over here and you'll do whatever it says. Some of them will give you specific benefits. Well, they'll all give you benefits, some better than others. But they're pretty, pretty powerful. Like for instance, here, this will give you a resource as well as points based on that resource or whatever, uh, letting you draw additional tapestry cards and gaining points for them. Really, really powerful stuff. And all of the end of all these trek trees will give you that. When you run out of all the eras going across, then you're going to be done. You're going to tally up your points. And when everybody else is done, you're going to see whoever has the most points in the game. Make sure you check how many points you get from any specific abilities on your board there, along with anything that has to do with this board here. There's always going to be a fifth and final round of just income. And this is the track you're going to do it on. It'll go all the way to 99, hit 100. And then after that, you can use additional tokens like these guys here to go to two, three, and even 499 points. That's the highest you can possibly get in this game. Be very surprised if you could do it but I suppose it's probably possible. Overall, that is pretty much the idea for how to play the game Tapestry. These die will have specific benefits, whether they let you move uh, your tokens across for free, or whether you're going to be choosing between these two die to either gain something like five points or a specific resource. It's kind of going to depend on how you want to play it. And the last kind of interesting thing to mention before we get done with this really brief summary of the game is there's three different completionist uh, areas here you could take part in, where if you complete one track, Whoever is the first person to do so is going to gain 10 points. The second person will get five. You can topple two opponents' towers. So, for instance, if somebody comes in, uh, comes from over here and hits you and knocks your dude down because they have a, mil an, a military ability, uh, then that's going to be one topple. And if they can do that twice, they'll score, score 10 points. And the second person will be five. And finally, conquering this middle island. Whoever does that first gets 10, and the second person will get five points as well. You can never stop somebody that has two, two. Whenever there's two of these things in a space, no one can mess with that specific space, even if it's not the same color. Uh, and that's the basic idea of the game Tapestry. This has got a lot of crazy stuff. We're going to go ahead and talk about all the things. I know there's a lot of cards I didn't talk about, a lot of the different terrain types I didn't discuss, and of course the different uh, civilizations that you can go ahead and choose from. But we'll go ahead and get into that in the review portion of the video. A lot of people have been talking about Tapestry lately, and that's because Stonemaier Games makes some crazy cool games, all right? Very lucky to get this one in as well and take a look at it and tell you about it. Uh, it's got all the hype right now. Well, what what do I think about Tapestry? And the first thing I came to think about this game when I saw it is I thought big type Civ game that's going to be super complex, extremely long, and uh, it's going to give me that whole like Sid Meier's experience. Well, it did not do that for me, but that doesn't necessarily mean I don't like the game. But before we get into that, let me tell you about some additional stuff I didn't go into with my very brief synopsis of the game, such as all the different choices of civilizations. You have the Merrymakers, which will allow you every uh, income round to move up on any of these three tracks to gain the benefit of them. And you can kind of pick and choose how you want to do so. Of course, going along one track more is going to benefit you. The inventors are going to be able to allow you to gain uh, uh, other people's inventions as well as like move yours up. It gives you basically progression on the specific choices that you make for uh, getting these uh, little guys up. Uh, isolationists. These guys are going to protect you from being attacked and secure your areas on the board. As well as at the end of the game, if you control one area specifically of the, of diff of a, the same type, as many as you can control the better, you're going to gain more victory points for them. And then the alchemists. These are kind of like a push your luck mechanism where you'll be rolling the science die and trying to acquire as many of these as possible without busting to move up on the tracks and not get the rewards for them. There's a ton of these guys here and it's a lot of fun being able to go ahead and select them and choose them because every time you pick different ones of these, it's very likely it's going to change the way in which you play the game. Solid, solid. I love player interaction. And I love the fact that you have uh, the different player uh, character choices in this. It does 
present a high quality for the game and I was expecting something like this and they delivered. These tapestry cards, uh, you're gonna start with a certain amount and then you're gonna gain more of them throughout the game. You'll be able to choose, but you always have to play one of them. Some of them are going to be to your benefit. Sometimes they might not be. They're always usually at least good in some way or they're going to help you in some way. Uh, it's just some of them are more of a double-edged sword than others. Something like guilds here is gonna, you, you can pay victory points to gain currency or you can pay currency to gain victory points and you cannot spend victory points that you do not have. So this is kind of a useful one depending on what you have and how you wanna utilize it. Where maybe you have technocracy where if you're the first player to enter this era, you gain a free tech card and upgrade it. And if you're not the first player to enter this era, you gain three points per opponent in the game. So it's kind of like a catch up if there's multiple players in it. It's got some kind of neat nice tech upgrade. Capitalism, when you gain income, you gain two victory points per specific type of currency you earn. And when you gain a specific type of house, you also gain a specific currency. It's a nice way of progressing the track, but there's a whole bunch of different cards here and how you want to choose to play them is going to be very important. And making sure you have them is also relevant as well. These little inventions or tech cards here are going to be very useful. You get to choose between them, which is nice. It reminds me of the game Euphoria as far as being able to select certain cards as well. Uh, this is a nice interaction. It's probably even, even better in my opinion because it progressively enhances your experience as you're trying to push them across the track but maybe you've got other characters like the inventors and they can take certain things and steal certain tech cards from you. But you're always going to want to utilize your inventions to help you progress in the game base and the tracks that you're moving along. All of these tracks hold a specific type of weight to them. Uh, and for instance, the science track might not be very beneficial at the beginning of the game, uh, but as you're rolling that science die, you're pushing all the other tracks and potentially even the science track up itself, allowing you to gain a benefit later on. So maybe it's a good first track, or maybe you want to explore and then use your military might to control the area, especially if you're an isolationist, isolationists, which will allow you to also gain currency. Currency is obviously very, very valuable in this game. And the only way you do that is by taking the houses off of your board and the more you can take off the better for each income phase especially at the beginning because you'll get more currency and more currency means you stay in the game longer staying in the game longer is much more likely to score you points but the way you can really score some points is utilizing your capital city board this one here is really cool because uh, you're trying to work out how the best way to place down your pieces are and you'll be able to place pieces off the board in certain ways as well to uh, you know block certain areas off uh, but you can never blo uh, block off the areas with a little circle so you're trying to basically play a little bit of a game of like tetris or I don't know, Candy Crush or whatever on the specific board here. Uh, and they're all different. You got like the tropical rainforest here. You've got the wetlands, the grasslands, the deserts. They're all similar as far as the fact that they all have the same amount of dots, but they are different in the fact that there is going to be, I would say even easier placement on some rather than others. Like I would prefer to play on the grassland or the forest over something like, oh, I don't know, the, the wetlands here, because you'll be able to place the bigger buildings down easier. Um, but maybe I'm off on that. I'm not too certain. It just felt like that when I was playing a specific uh, game or two. Uh, nevertheless, though, the game is beautiful. The c components are excellent. All of the pieces look really nice, really sc nice and sculpted. They have the colors already on them. You don't even need to paint these guys. You could make them look even nicer, but you don't need to because it's all fleshed out. Some of this reminds me of Euphoria in a lot of ways, like the different symbols, like the star and whatnot, has a feel to a lot of his games. So this game is going to feel like other games from Stone Meyer. And if you like those games, this one's definitely going to be one of those that you're going to enjoy as well. The theme itself, did it come out for me? Not really. It kind of does because as it pushes through from era to era, you're able to select a tapestry card that is going to change the way you and your civilization flow. But it's kind of weird to me that maybe the, the third or fourth era, you might be playing down a, a Black Plague card or something like that, in which you're kind of going back into the Dark Ages while you've already built your craziness. I mean, that can kind of make sense as well. But for some reason, I just felt more like I was worrying about uh, controlling my capital city than I was about exploring the main board most of the time and then the tapestry was kind of like a nice add-on to change the way your game is playing each and every era, but it didn't necessarily give me the fact that I was feeling like I was in a specific era based on what I was playing, like, oh, I don't know, capitalism. Do I feel like I'm playing as a capitalistic era? Uh, kind of, you know, they do do their work rather well, but it just was, it, it could have been really anything in my opinion, but that doesn't change my enjoyment for this game. I, I really, really like Tapestry, and I think most people are going to like Tapestry. In fact, people who enjoy Stonemaier games, a lot of you guys out there who are just on the fence between this one, I think it's a rather easy one to pick up, provided you don't mind spending about, I would say, two to two and a half hours to play the game. 
It's not exactly complex, you're simply spending resources to move along four tracks and gain the benefit. And the rulebook is only four pages long, but what really gets you, I suppose, I'm gonna grab this over here, is I suppose that these, ah, my butt, ah, here we go. These little, these little cards here, they all have their own benefits and how they function. You need to reference these quite a few times throughout your first couple games to understand what each of the symbols mean. Uh, uh, all of these tracks as well have a specific requirement. Some of them have bonus requirements, and some of them let you go to space and whatnot. I mean, space is a cool idea as well. I like this. I like the exploration track as my favorite, because then you can ch choose to go to space. But really, space is just choosing through these tiles, putting one down face up in front of you, symbolizing that you are now in space. You've gained that specific exploration trait of going to space, really getting a higher benefit. All of the end of the tracks provide some type of extreme benefit as well. Uh, and yeah. It's just got a lot of cool different aspects to it. The game's got a ton of replayability. You're probably not going to play. I would doubt that most of you are probably going to play through all of these factions as they are. There's, I don't even know, I would say like 15 of them or something like that. Maybe you will. That's not too crazy, I suppose. But uh, you're never going to play with the same combination of players and, and, uh, and types unless you specifically choose to. The fact that you have two sides of the board is rather nice as well. Just did a really good job of this game. If you like a game that involves resource management, trying to have a little bit of area control, that's not too confrontational actually, because mainly the things that are gonna be confrontational are your character cards, uh, a little bit of the military combat, which is still not even that crazy. And uh, sometimes the tapestry cards can, can get you, there's specific traps and whatnot that can facilitate you getting messed over during the game. Uh, you're gonna like this game. It's pretty light and breezy. There is a bit of analysis paralysis because while there might only be four technical options for you on your turn as to which track you move on, each of those tracks present a unique benefit or benefits to you, and then you're gonna have to select how you want to utilize them, where you wanna place your different buildings on this board, etc., etc., etc. There is quite a lot of thinking that can take place. So the game can go rather quick with very experienced players, or it can take a rather a long time with beginner players or people who are not used to games like this. Overall, Tapestry is an excellent game. If you guys like games like this, pick it up right now. I strongly suggest, I, I, I do like it, I strongly suggest you do take a look at it. If you're on the fence with this game, I would give it another look-see. Tapestry is a beautiful, fun, crazy game, and uh, I really enjoy it. I'm looking forward to see what they do next, and uh, so far, none of his games really have disappointed me. Good job, Stonemeyer Games. Excited to see what you guys come up with next.